child of 3 years diarrhea was admitted in the hospital and uh, whatever the treatment that is required was given luckily by god's grace sixth day of admission child recovered there was no problem etc still on uh, kind of thing infection the antibiotic on eighth day again child went into a kind of problem doctor felt how come again uh, whether any surgery is necessary that's the discussion then he overheard mother saying somebody no no that baba gave that uh, thing and i gave still he has not then they have asked what actually you gave please tell us because we have to protect not only your sir, child ourselves also then she showed some kind of color ding, color liquid i don't disrespect the woman's faith in that baba please remember i am not here to judge anybody i am not here the person has to realize it's as simple as that but the doctor was very particular because when she is when the child is having such and such colored liquid we do not know what is the liquid how far to what extent to tell you very frankly ultimately the baby died ninth day luckily all this he documented the doctor stating that today only i realized this particular liquid she was giving for the last 8 days etc etc and he kept that liquid in a sample in the pathology department when the post mortem was conducted they have handed out to the person and they have identified they said some kind of chemical substance etc and which played havoc in the system and as a result the baby died luckily it i mean no doubt the child could not be saved but the doctor could be saved because if it is not brought to his knowledge he would not have done anything suppose if he knows it is his ethical obligation to tell the parents you shall not do such things what i want to tell you is every professional service provider in terms of ethical obligation it's very clear that the justification for administering a particular treatment you must be very clear and you need to communicate it to the patient what are the pros and cons and the third most important one what is the expected outcome please remember it may or may not happen but you need to communicate to the patient what is the expected outcome of the treatment what you are doing under certain circumstances where the doctor himself may say this is what i think but i advise you to approach some other doctor if you want me to suggest i will suggest or if you have any doctor of the known specialty please take copy of the medical record show and see what is his opinion please remember in medical records these two are the most significant documents number 1 the referral number 2 the second opinion fundamental if it is a medical legal case all other documents also will follow medical legal case host of documents ending up with post mortem report because in medical legal cases i am sure you are aware prosecution i mean police case is fundamental in medical legal cases informing police is not a matter of choice it is a mandate you have there is a referral slip also for that purpose therefore in medical legal case trauma case etc or rta road traffic accident rta etc all those things will follow a different nature of document similarly if it is a clinical trial what are the documents some very i mean there are many 32 forms are there i, I don't think we will be able to remember everything but one or two most significant for example sae form i want you to know serious adverse event either ae or sae because as iec members please remember we are all i am also a member of iec as a lawyer for the last 4 years most sincere we are rendering you in one hospital i am the chairperson also we are in aec only with one object and only one purpose you know what is the purpose how effectively you can protect the interest of the volunteer don't impede the advancement of scientific research but keep an eye on the participant that is the reason i always say all the ethical mem- committee members you must know what is the document suppose if sae happens i am just giving an example could be a healthy volunteer or a patient what do you do number 1 and the principal investigator he has to send a fax to the person notified there is a address you have to mention and say this is the thing etc and in the irb meeting you have to explain what actually happened what is the document what is the reporting when did you do and ultimately what happened to the patient 
what kind of care that has been taken all these things are there under certain circumstances you will be surprised to know the drug trial is to be halted because we do not know what kind of impact it may have on other volunteers in a doctor patient relationship either you talk in terms of rendering service or in a medical legal case where you render service as a doctor to a patient but the patient was involved in a particular crime commission etc third in a clinical trial setting in all the three settings please remember medical record documentation plays a very 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 significant role whenever we say medical record all these are medical records starting from the prescription till in the case of a doctor patient relationship either death summary or discharge summary in a clinical trial the entire protocol observation etc around 33 documents are there and finally suppose if the sae or ae happens what kind of follow up etc and if the clinical trial is completed friends uh, one hour back i asked you whether you have read that book of icmr in your folder you know why uh, one reason why i want you to read is many of us we might have read the original document ha uh, maybe you have not read the updated version i want you to read updated version because the role and responsibility of iec has been methodically and radically changed from the original document you are an iec member in such a case you you may become because you are in the field no it is better to know there are nearly 12 headings are there the first page if you look into the content not only from the constitution monitoring interim review review how do you do what kind of thing so many aspects have been i am saying all this is necessary because there also medical record documentation plays a very very vital okay in the entire perspective of medical records many doctors i am sure you must have heard about this criticism they always say no no jogaro the way you talk about medical records etc at the end of your lecture we feel we should neglect patient we should concentrate more on records many doctors all my friends good friends that's what you are saying is it not bad why should we concentrate on record forget about record i have to save the patient life i have to do something about the life of the patient the main criticism of doctors pertain to medical records is this is not individual doctor specific argument this is a community specific historical argument please pardon me don't mistake me doctors they are very poor in two things one is writing another one is communication you ask them uh, you ask them anything else they are kings and queens conduct a quiz they are number 1 ask them about the subject they are phenomenally knowledgeable but ask them to write no ask them to communicate no you know why i will tell you the reason historically i have revised the medical curriculum of 50 years in this country i realized at no point of time medical record documentation was considered as a curriculum in your studies never medical record documentation was never taught to the students of mbbs or postgraduate studies as a subject second patient communication also never formed part of your curriculum never as a result what happened you concentrated on autonomy no no anatomy and a physiology some other subject no other because now what happened the doctor patient relationship now you take any context even in the case of clinical trial for example as a principal investigator you need to communicate to the volunteer right as a doctor patient relationship you need to communicate with the patient please understand medical record documentation also is important they refuse to admit the need and significance because of historical reasons now what happened i am sure you must have realized there are so many institutions offering hospital administration and hospital management courses have you looked into medversity apollo chennai based now hyderabad shifted recently 
there are so many institutions offering the curriculum of those courses if you look into they mention about medical record documentation filing patient communication particularly the doctors who enroll as students of those courses people started realizing now the doctor must be equipped with these two skills unless a doctor is skillful in communicating with the patient not only that the patient may file a case against you in consumer protection even otherwise in your own promotional activity that is your own career etc you may not be considered unless you are very skillful in communication people started realizing healthcare industry started realizing not merely as a defense of litigation please remember as a matter of institutional policy people started realizing there is a need for proper adequate clear medical record documentation people used to say lot of criticism of jogar no no you say all that how many pages i have to write one page enough three lines enough two page enough i said there is no scale to say that i want two lines or i want 20 lines it depends upon the context it depends upon the patient it depends upon the service you are rendering it depends upon the situation so many factors to be taken into consideration let me give an example i have some friends from uh, those who work in government hospitals they say jogar you talk about medical record documentation okay you know how many patients i see in my opd i said 25 35 65 said 170 i went to some other doctor private hospital which is 60 kilometers away from bangalore city how many patients you we lots no number you tell me uh 3 to 4 in a week there are no patients at all there are many medical colleges i hope you are aware which are scattered around not many patients you get you take corporate hospital in bangalore city how many patient yeah 30 40 you see or 25 30 but can can there be a, uh, i mean a comparison uh, it is something like a comparing orange and a uh, mosambi uh, apple what kind of comparison we are making and we want a legal mandate how can you expect a doctor who is working in a government hospital who looks after 175 patients please remember with what kind of medical does that mean in medical or i mean government hospitals you don't require medical record documentation the way they manage so many people it is incredible i tell you for instance you mentioned no one who writes the pg student is a trained for that purpose history taking for example the the student is trained to do that tak 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 you know some other nurse some other person, everything the document is get right then the document also you don't go on writing essay 100 mark question paper there is a proforma there is a method and there is an indication what is to be written and objectively precise writing you don't require a, a kind of 1000 uh, words uh, competition no that is not what is a medical record please remember i know judges when we show the record they look at us they laugh at me one doctor one medical record i showed sir this is what my doctor has done he said this is the thing aroma what is this <laughs> what is this huh? what is huh? this is the way you write and see what is this you know but he doesn't know. i know no because i started reading all that because uh, doctors they seldom write sentences they no short hand is for they write shortest hand <laughs> shortest possible hand they write one uh, that's what i'm saying i said when judge made the fun of it i explained please put yourself in the show what i want to tell you i am not saying that that was created only to mislead a lawyer or a patient or a judge no the pressure the kind of situation the content all those things we need to understand i mean we are not from medicine we need to understand to tell you very frankly they appreciate that i said it is not that only my doctor does any hospital every doctor that's what because as a matter of convention they follow that i'm just giving an example to show all these concerns what you have exp- i mean explained they are genuine i have no doubt about that but to, to a large extent 
they are misconceived because what is required from a law the doctors are not aware that is the problem here see the major problem in india what we are facing is as a lawyer as a patient as a general public i say are you a doctor you must follow law ethics and regulation finish that's what i say but i never bothered whether the doctor knows what is the law he has to follow to what extent he has to follow what are the ethics we are talking whether ethics are being taught in his course or not where from he gets ethics for example you are an ips officer i'm just giving an example where from you got your training national police academy hyderabad correct you are an ias officer where from you got your training your basic degree is only mbbs in mbbs you are not taught revenue laws you are not constitutional law but you are given training where from you got it mussari lal bahadur shastri academy for every professional you say that you have to do undergo training but when it comes to doctor he is the only professional service provider he is neither taught nor trained and he is blissfully ignorant also but the society expects him to be legally sensitive ethically obligated and regulatory remarkable how how is it possible that is where education is important please remember as you very rightly said it should form part of the curriculum not only that those who are experienced doctors those who are practicing must also be given training that is the reason why we say continuing education why do we say sme we say continuing medical education i think to that effect medical record documentation is something we need to convey please remember medical record documentation is not merely for the purpose of protecting your interest please understand it protects everybody in the society for instance as she very rightly said if she is referring the patient to a particular specialty suppose if it is documented whether she has been referred to to neurophysician or not if it is not written tell me how do you show? simple question similarly the person is to be taken up for surgery next day pre anesthetic check up previous day anesthetist comes and gets the signature all the kind of thing etc unless it is documented how anybody can come to a conclusion whether check up has been done or not similarly when we talk in terms of the entire operation notes what actually happened in that case what actually was the problem i'll give an example recently we have won a case remarkable case i must tell you i felt extremely happy the way my team has done the research remarkable research we have done it's a simple case but a remarkable case 63 year old person was subjected to hip replacement or tkr total knee replacement something like that first operation there was a problem second operation was done in a second hospital same joint same joint same joint problem was there first operation was conducted in uh, hosmat second operation conducted in apollo chennai <clears throat> in the medical record those hospital i mean the doctors who have conducted the second surgery they have written so clearly the implant size is 47 what they have implanted okay it ought to have been 45 because of this there was a problem and accordingly in second surgery we have redone that mistake that's what it was patient filed a case against the doctor first doctor, first doctor naturally first doctor we asked the first doctor hospital dr chandi said uh, we have to call out all the papers i don't remember what actually happened and then my team went and looked into all the documents etc you will be surprised to know the operation notes of the first operation there is one sheet which was not included in the medical records which were given to the patient that sheet they have identified in that sheet it was written this 63 year old person had already undergone similar surgery 5 years ago okay which means first surgery is not first surgery that is second surgery 
while removing that implant they have identified that was 47 and therefore they have incorporated 47 that's what is written you will be surprised to know the doctor i do not know where from he got this knowledge etc he said no no this is a, we mandate that uh, implant size etc very very because that's one potential source for litigation please remember because of that sentence in the medical record we could convince the judge saying that first thing is that first operation is not the first operation first operation is the second operation first operation was held up five years ago when it was implanted that was the size when they have removed the implant of first surgery that was the number in second surgery the implant is that number there is no problem at all where is the negligence accordingly it was crashed friends here at this juncture another important significant information i want to repeat when we talk about medical record documentation many people they reiterate suggest and appeal to you that medical records must be documented but the crucial question is to what extent it is to be documented number one number two okay medical record is available how far to what time period you have to keep it in custody is it three years is it five years is it ten years okay and the third most significant one when we talk about medical record what are the tips you need to know as healthcare providers? When we say healthcare providers, I hope you are aware, medical records are to be documented not only by a doctor, even by a paramedic. For example, nurses sheet we say, the entire, even by a person who is doing allied service. For example, in the case of a cardiac operation subsequently, physiotherapist, physiotherapist recording is necessary or another specialty anesthetist anesthetist recording is not, which means every person who is rendering service he is expected to record the relevant information in the medical record now the issue is to what extent that information for in example you take informed consent form everybody knows that consent form is necessary and it has to be in terms of need not necessary be you know every time I mean, doctors ask should it be in written form if so what kind of information who has to sign whether patient has to sign or witness has to sign please remember all these issues you need to clarify there is no doubt about that but that does not mean you emphasize only on consent form many doctors think in a very very wrong manner if there is a signature of the patient that is enough that will protect his interest that's what they think that is a fundamentally misconceived let me clarify a signature on informed consent form only indicates signature on informed consent form nothing more than that not, i mean please understand i mean i am not saying it is not required it is required but that does not mean with that you protect your interest no it is not a defense it is not a no no i got informed consent form you can't do anything no even though there is a consent is form issue. still ah it is not that, is, not that issue. is the person the patient can go to the court of law for instance lot of cases have appeared before consumer protection the time tested process tubectomy tubectomy after 5 years she conceives again same lady and she delivers then she files a case against the doctor who conducted tubectomy. In fact, I had a case three years back, you know, a learning experience for me. Judge asked, uh, are you appearing for doctor? I said, yes. You have any witness? I said, I don't require a witness. You know, but patient is introducing a witness. Either. I said, I don't know, but let's see who, what kind of witness, who is that person? He took, asked one middle-aged woman, maybe 35, 36 years. What is your name? This is my name. Who are you? I am a neighbor of her. Then I asked in what way she is related to this case. Then he said, please don't interrupt me, Jogar. Let me complete first. At the end, you yourself will get to know. 
Then he asked her, have you undergone tubectomy? She said, yes. Please pardon me for asking, have you conceived once again? She said, no. Then the lawyer said, see, she has undergone tubectomy, but she did not conceive. But my client, she has undergone tubectomy, but she has conceived. That itself shows medical negligence on the part of the doctor. Remarkable argument. I told the judge, have you heard about recanalization? He said, no. Then I gave an article, I said, this is the thing, that is the thing, etc., etc. That does not mean absolutely till her thing, no. Sometimes it may happen and she may conceive. That does not mean that the doctor is negligent. And there are cases, interpretation, these, that, etc., etc. I am giving this example to inform you the most crucial aspect here is when we consider the kind of court proceeding, please remember, general, I mean, popular thinking is different from scientific explanation. Many of us, popularly, we may think hazard things, but scientific explanation is very, very significant. To that effect, whether you have communicated to the patient or not, what normally we say, no, there is a possible, I mean, no doubt, ubiquitin has been conducted, but there is a possibility of recanalization, etc. And there may be a case, situation where you may conceive once again. I mean, that information is important. Should that be in the consent form? That is the issue. You got the point? When we talk in terms of patient communication, a possible consequence which alters the lifestyle of the person, you need to communicate. For instance, Jogaro undergone bypass surgery. After bypass surgery, Jogaro cannot give lectures. Is he not expected to tell me? Because my lifestyle has changed. Whatever. I mean, I am not saying that you list 1 to A to Z. No. But the significant ones which materially, substantially alter my lifestyle, you need to tell me. You got the point. I am saying this requires to be communicated and documented. That is the reason why consent form, a printed consent form is not valid. That is what we say. You know why? Printed consent form is like our wedding card. What is a wedding card? Except the name of the person, invite, the card remains the same. Our printed consent forms also same thing. The same old thing, blah, 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 blah. And if anything happens, and neither doctor, nor nurse, nor astronaut, nobody can be liable for whatsoever, full stop. And you get the signature. And the doctor in hospital thinks that, um, yeah, everything is protected, uh, there is no problem. But I remember recently when I, Bangalore, my father, who is 80 years old, just for general checkup, I, I was sitting in the, one patient was, uh, doctor came running. Have you taken signature? Hammaya. Doctor was relaxed. He wants only signature on the paper, that's all. Please understand, signature on a paper doesn't indicate anything. Take it from me. However, please remember, informed consent form must reflect the communication. I am not saying that you go on writing. For example, in a given context of medical, I mean doctor-patient relationship, you inform, you communicate, this is what, etc. I have communicated, this is the language he understands, this is the, what I did, and these are the risks which I perceive. Therefore, at no point of time, neither a case nor a statute mentions that you have to write uh, A4 size, two pages, or three paragraph. No, not at all. Whether he essentially you have communicated the risk or pros and cons of the operation or not, that's it. What I am saying is, you do not go by the technicality. No, that is not what the law wants. Please remember, law says informed consent, please remember, either for a particular purpose of treatment or a surgical intervention, etc. It is not even necessary if the patient always, if the patient is not in a position to be receptive, either on account of suffering or on account of consciousness, you take any factor, even attendee, more than enough. But if the patient is conscious, it is for you to decide. Please remember, it is for the doctor to decide. That is where I say autonomy. Please remember, autonomy is to be protected. In fact, Supreme Court made it very clear. What is to be communicated 
let the judges and lawyers decide it should be decided by the doctor a doctor in a given situation let him that is the reason why informed consent form is not a printed matter where you go on getting signatures and submit no that's not what it is according to law informed consent form is a continuous process please remember patient communication is necessary and thereafter documentation is necessary which is a patient specific problem specific and context specific in nature in other words almost all these medical records please remember there are different situations there are different uh, uh, examples i can quote where the way the documentation has taken place it protected the interest of the doctors there is a lot of misconception among the minds i mean patients there is no doubt about that i'll give an example which is something a great learning on my part hysterectomy 38 year old woman three children spinal anesthesia everything went on well there is no problem at all subsequently lot of uh, problems neurological problems etc and uh, the husband filed a case against the doctor saying that it is because of spinal anesthesia it has been he must have taken some other anesthesia why did you opt for the root this that etc l3 l4 this that so many things after reading the complaint i asked the judge one thing no i understand their problem that after operation only she got this problem that i understand but he did not tell us because of the operation she got the problem you understand you understand the difference no i I'll, i'll give an example jogara entered rain started in times of sequence jogara entry rain started in times of time sequence perfect but can you say no no the moment jogara started lecturing it started raining cause and effect doesn't make sense time sequence is different cause effect is different you agree after operation she developed a problem as a sequence i agree but you have to tell me it is because of spinal anesthesia only i got the problem you agree i said the complaint doesn't talk about that complaint is to be dismissed they have dismissed the complaint what i want to tell you is i understand the popular patient mind you know what patient generally thinks whatever adverse consequence happens it is because of doctor maybe due to consumer attitude maybe due to the fee what you collect or maybe due to the amount they spend on health care or maybe due to my own brethren lawyers community when i said brethren eh? you know lawyers are excellent instigators in good old and days <laughs> after previously ambulance chasers you remember nowadays they don't chase ambulance they straight go to nursing home get a signature and vakala form and file greatest instigators are from the lawyers community why i am saying is patient is subjected to so much of stress and strain as a result the patient may not be able to really understand whether there is a scientific nexus or not they will file a case that's how the many cases are being filed i mean that's where we say medical record documentation scientific explanation and whatever you are doing which can be ethically justifiable in nature i think it is absolutely in the interest of the profession i'll give one more final example in medical record documentation medical record documentation value i realized in my first case 6 years ago i resigned from national hospital of india university i started practice within 3 days i got a case one doctor came and he said uh, i want you to i said okay i started reading these that i was teaching medical law therefore i am quite familiar the case is very simple you know the case is uh, cesarean section no uh, i'm sorry for my observation don't mistake me nowadays normally there are no normal deliveries nowadays normally there are no normal deliveries reasons are different that is a different matter okay second thing cs was conducted cesarean section 
on 11th day she started having dribbling of urine problem urologist was consulted examined stent placed ureteral vaginal fistula surgery was conducted 23rd day discharge no problem mother and baby were happy that is the sequence okay naturally wife and husband filed a case against the doctor mysore district for they have asked for 15 lakhs the problem i understand mental agony like is that judge you openly said uh, jogar i am not very sure about the subject but luckily there was a doctor in the panel i said doctor is there there is nothing to worry he will guide even i am not a medical doctor okay things are going on he asked what is the difference between uvf and vvf vesico and ureter i gave the example this is the thing that is the thing etc then he didn't understand very frankly normally you don't go to courts therefore you don't know i'll tell you normally judges they look at you and uh, but they don't understand <laughs> several times happened i thought he understood second question i what we have to do i said i'll give one more question is question like it journal then what happened no no forget about this uh, ureter problem jogaro why did he, the doctor conduct cesarean section normal delivery you should have tried no judge asked i said yes you are right i even as a lawyer i feel that he should have tried normal delivery but in this case the mother had fetal distress then he asked what is fetal distress i said fetal distress is a condition where these are the things etc some symptoms are there tell me what are those symptoms i said fhr is one very important uh, fetal heart rate this is the thing so then i said uh, like okay another thing is maybe cord around that possible there are other things also these are the thing no i understand but uh, in this case whether it uh, fhr is less or not how do i know judge asked i said definitely i am sure searching for document because i never expected this question i thought he will ask me about ureter vision fistula he didn't ask about that i was searching my doctor was sitting there both wife and husband husband is anesthetist wife is gynecologist you know that is a best combination <laughs> yeah, all over india <laughs> then i asked doctor she said yes fhr was conducted i said you have conducted but has it been documented she said uh, no but not documentation does not mean that fhr has not been conducted i repeat not documented does not mean fhr was not done then judge said not documented means not done <laughs> i searched all the document there is i said i am sorry she has not document then she started giving no no that the time 12:30 it was raining night time nobody was there this that etc i said if you say that he may say that where is anesthetist also don't say all those things let us say. ultimately we lost the case very honestly but i am very happy you know what great learning not only on my part on her part as well. she told me no no professor jogar i really understand i mean he asked us to pay 50000 that's a different matter we paid 50000 but she took it in such a no what he said is correct that sentence even today i don't forget therefore i conclude my dear friends when we talk about medical record documentation first thing is that you need to be contextual situation specific number 1 number 2 informed consent form the patient communication third you need not write to so many pages that is not what is not going to be weighed the essence is to be written that's all if you can follow all these things i told you different types of medical records i am sure it is not only in your own interest i think it is in the interest of everyone please remember patient cannot be forgotten patient is an important body of the entire process in healthcare even in the interest of the patient also it is very very crucial that medical record definition is necessary okay i came across a case where 
mother and grandmother both had given a consent but very next day i had to face the wrath of the child's father oh and that is that case is still pending so as you say the legalities now in such situations is it mandatory that we take the parents both the parents see as a matter in fact this question not with regard to fetal autopsy but in a different context some other doctors posed me this question as a matter stand wife consent no i'm sorry women's consent wife and husband's consent it appears only in three statutes one is mtp second one is pndt prenatal diagnostic third one is code of medical ethics with regard to uh, sterilization okay in all other situations the law is not very clear there is nothing like a black and white whether wife alone can give or should we take husband it's not very clear but i feel i mean because you have raised a very interesting question i feel in case of fetal autopsy autopsy is meant to, i mean is a process meant to give the reason in no way it affects or hurts the life of the fetus correct therefore in terms of advancement of scientific reasoning if one person's consent is there i think it should be legal and adequate that's what i feel if there is anything to do with the fetus some genetic engineering etc maybe we can say that both wife and uh, men, uh, husband consent is necessary but otherwise i think this should be adequate i'll conclude uh, i'll give a very important case i mean the case which literally influenced me in terms of reasoning and objectivity lord denning this you know heard about lord denning one of the very famous judges of uk the from court of appeal to house of lords the court case for 11 years and ultimately lord denning gave the judgment the case facts are very simple 11 year old boy to be administered anesthesia that liquid etc something you know while injection while he is kept in the some liquid no and you take that break it and, and uh, correct no that correct no after that injection the boy faced lot of problems neurological these that etc a detailed enquiry by the bmc revealed that the vial developed a crack as a result the liquid bottle in which it was kept that liquid crept into and as a result got and as a result the boy faced the problem am i clear now the issue is is there a duty on the part of the doctor who gave the injection to see whether there is a crack or not you know that's the case lord denning he rejected their argument you know what he said duty on the part of the doctor can be stretched to such a level which can be reasonably expected of him to perform whenever there is a why whenever there is it is taken that it is proper unless some kind of suppose the crack is visible or some other thing etc but to what extent you can exercise i mean enforce the duty and he refused to recognize the duty on the part of the doctor he said no there is no such duty on the part of the doctor to see that to tell you very frankly it shocked many doctors of indian origin many doctors felt that no no that is a wrong judgment but internationally the judgment was clear for one reason what they said is the judge was not influenced by any emotion when he was deciding how far it is practicable that's what is guideline and accordingly he decided you may consider it is good or bad that's a different matter but what i want to convey is when we talk in terms of a duty on the part of the doctor there cannot be an absolute duty that's yes. the simple reason why we say yes. duty to take care but not duty to cure 
the duty on the part of the doctor is not to cure he may or he may not be able to do but there is a duty to take care if there is a shortfall of that standard then you make him liable otherwise nobody will be able to practice medicine because of that that's the kind of thing. 